가톨릭 교우 여러분 안녕하세요. 저는 한국 그리스도 사상연구소 소장 최영균 시몬 신부입니다. 진실은 그것을 찾는 사람들에게 찾아온다 라는 말 혹시 들어보셨나요? 암울한 공산주의 체코에서 끊임없이 신앙을 갈구했던 할리크 몬시뇨르의 체험 속에서 우러나온 말입니다. 정신적 혼돈의 시대를 살아가고 있는 오늘날 우리가 꼭 한번 묵상해 볼 만한 말이라고 생각합니다. 오늘 가톨릭 평화방송은 할리크 몬시뇨르의 특별 강연회가 열리고 있는 이곳 전주 치명자산 평화의 전당에 나왔는데요. 할리크 몬시뇨를 직접 모시고 말씀을 나눠보겠습니다. 안녕하세요, 문신열님. 한국의 시청자 여러분에게 인사와 간단한 소개 부탁드리겠습니다. So my name is Thomas Harik. I came from Prague, Czech Republic. I'm Czech Catholic priest, also professor of the Charles University in Prague. My books were translated into about 20 languages, and five of them are also in Korean. 한국의 교우들은 올해 출간된 그리스도교의 오후를 비롯한 다섯 권의 책을 통해 몬시뇨님을 직접 만날 수 있었는데요. 이번 첫 방안을 통해서 한국의 교우들을 만난 소감을 들어보고 싶습니다. It's a very special visit uh, for me. Uh, you know, I was not allowed for 20 years to travel outside of the Soviet bloc. And after the fall of communism, I visited all the continents, even Antarctica, <laughs> and I gave the lectures everywhere. And uh, normally it is lectures and then questions and answers. First day of my stay, by the pilgrimage to the sacred places, to the tomb of the martyrs. And then I prayed for Korea and also for the benediction of this my visit. I spoke about synodality, and I think we experience uh, the synodal church here because the synodality it means the common way, uh, and there were bishops, there were priests, there were laymen, men and women, and we shared our experiences. We we prayed together and uh, have spoken together. So I think it was a very nice experience of the synodal church. 그럼 본격적으로 대담 이어가면 좋겠습니다. 어, 지금은 체코가 민주화된 공화국으로 자리 잡고 있지만 신부님 유년기만 해도 공산체제에서 종교의 자유가 없던 시절을 보냈는데요. 종교를 갖기 어려웠던 환경에서 신앙을 찾을 수 있었던 강렬한 계기가 있으셨나요? I was born in 1948. It was the year when the communists came to power in our country. And I spent 42 years under the communist regime. And it was a very hard time. And uh, I grew up in the Prague intellectual family, but in the secular family. I was not brought in the face. 
And perhaps uh, the first step on my spiritual path was the meeting uh, the Christian art, the spiritual music, uh, the lovely architecture of the Prague churches. Uh, but it was still uh, some intellectual sympathy. In the late 60s, uh, when many priests, they were uh, 15, 16 years in prison, they were released, and I met those priests, and they're a wonderful person, so a real witness of, uh, of the faith. So they were my teachers of faith, uh, and uh, uh, it was my motivation. The process of the process is difficult, but the process of the process is very difficult to be a priest. How can it be a priest? 어떤 사목 활동을 할수 있었는지 궁금합니다. There was just only one priest seminary, which was absolutely controlled by the communist government. So for me, it was the only way to study in underground secretly and to be secretly ordained uh, by one East German bishop in his uh, private uh, chapel. Uh, so perhaps at the, uh, uh, at the beginning of my vocation was one event in 69. It was a year before the Soviet occupation because in 68 there was so-called Prague Spring, uh, the short period of some liberation. Then came the Russian occupation in August 68. Jan Palach burned himself to death, and I organized the Requiem, the Mass for Jan Palach, and I brought the death mask of Jan Palach from the hospital to the church. At the time, it was January, it was night, and I brought this death mask. It was for me an occasion to have some inner dialogue, and he offered his life uh, to wake up the people. And uh, I uh, realized it is a challenge, so I must also to do something with my life not to bad myself, but perhaps I should uh, give my life to God, to, to church, uh, to the self, uh, to do what the church was not allowed to do. So I was secretly ordained and I did all the things, giving the spiritual retreats, uh, giving the lectures, uh, to work with the young people. And then I became advisor to the old Cardinal Tomasek. He was practically only one bishop in office in our country at that time. So I was one of his advisors. I was preparing some of his open letters to government and preaching and so on. So it was a uh, very dramatic time uh, during this 11 years in the, uh, when I was priest in the uh, underground church. 한국도 분단된 현실에서 통일을 준비하는 시기를 지금 보내고 있는데요. 체코가 민주화되고 나서 당시 가톨릭 교회의 상황은 어땠는지 또 사목자로서 어떤 역할을 하셨는지 궁금합니다. It is very difficult uh, because it is quite easy to, uh, to destroy the democracy and to establish the dictatorship. But it is not easy to destroy the dictatorship and to build a democracy. People say it is more easy to make uh, the fish soup from the fish, but to make uh, from the fish soup 
the fish again, it is difficult. <laughs> so I, I think uh, that uh, uh, in the 80s, uh, we've got a feeling there are some, uh, some changes in Russia. It was Gorbachev there. And uh, so we expected that there will come some changes. But we didn't know that it would be so quickly and I prepared with my uh, friends the 10 years uh, pastoral program for the spiritual renewal of the nation. Not only for the church, but for the nation. Because I think it's very important to show that the church cares not only for itself, but it has a responsibility for the society as such and that the church must renew because the church was also wounded by this communist regime. I heard once an interview with Solzhenitsyn, the Russian dissident, and he was asked um, what will come after communism. And he said there will be a long, a long way of healing. It is really a way of healing. So in our country, uh, this, uh, this change uh, came, uh, uh, came in the 89, but uh, you know, uh, uh, that is very difficult to build a democratic culture because democracy is not just a political system, it is the culture of relations between people and it must be developed and it takes some time. So I think after the fall of communism in North Korea, it will be a very long time of healing because the society is wounded. And after the fall of uh, the dictatorship, there must be the reconciliation because there are people persecuted, they were also the agent of the secret police, and all these people now, they should live together. So the process of reconciliation, but it was um, without this, uh, this healing process. There was non-violence, uh, but, uh, uh, but there was also another danger, so the bagatellization of the guilt. Eh? I was dissident, you were confident, everything is okay, it's forgotten, it is not good. It must be uh, the healing process, it must uh, be uh, the guilt, uh, must be named by the name, it must be confessed, and the people, they were guilty, they must ask for forgiveness, there must be some process of uh, penitence, of something like that, and then can uh, the church and the people and the society be healthy. But it is a very difficult process. It is not only the political process, it is a spiritual and moral process. And I think the church has a very important role because the church and the Christians should be experts for reconciliation. And reconciliation, it is something more difficult than just to forget, just to forget the, the past, mm -hmm. to heal the past. Right. 아시다시피 북한은 공산주의 독재 정권이 여전히 강력하게 사람들을 통제하고 있고요. 몬신율 님도 오랜 시간 이런 경험을 한 것으로 알고 있습니다. 통일을 대비해서 한국 교회와 그리스도인들은 무엇을 할수 있을까요? I think it will be very important to uh, build uh, some educational system because when the church in North Korea was so separated from uh, the free church, from the development of theology, it was in our country uh, the same. After the fall of communism, uh, for uh, many Christians, 
it was a real shock. But they are not all the people were just accepted the Christians, ne? and there were some prejudices also, and uh, some uh, some persecuted Christians um, expected that uh, there will be a paradise after after the fall of communism. But it was it was a long way through the desert, ne? like in the Bible in the Old Testament, uh, the Exodus was the long way and I think the church should be prepared for this. So uh, to help uh, the, the people they were separated to understand uh, the absolutely different moral situation. Uh, because some, uh, some Christians, they were persecuted and they were very good in the time of persecution. They were not able to understand that now is the different situation. And then the task for the church is different. It must be prepared. Seche Christo Gyoi Ohuese, Jongyongwa, Kamsai Maumro, Francisco Gyoangim Ke, Pachimida, Ranen, Honsarel, Pulsi Sosmida. Grigo, Johan Bauro, Isewai, Manam, Ihuedo, Gyoangim Dilwa, Kipun, Inyoni, Isotago, Tronendeo. 인상 깊었던 에피소드를 소개해 주실 수 있을까요? Yes, I knew all these last three popes, the John Paul II, the Benedict and also the Francis. Uh, but uh, uh, most of them, I got a very good relation with John Paul II. Accidentally, I was ordained priest as I told you secretly in the East Germany, and it was the day before the intronization of John Paul II. And the next morning, I celebrated my first Mass also in the chapel of one monastery in East Germany. We went with the bishop to see uh, the transmission of the first mass of the new pope with this sermon, fear not, fear not. And it was also for me very important uh, on this beginning of my uh, very dangerous activity in underground. And I thought to myself, would I have one day the opportunity to tell this pope I am the first priest who was ordained during your pontificate. I was just day before your intronization. And I got this opportunity 11 years after. It was in, and there was a canonization of the Agnes of Prague in Rome. And we were allowed, first time, 11,000 of Czechs uh, to go to uh, Rome uh, to take part in this celebration of the canonization. And it was for me the first opportunity to meet the Pope. Because uh, during the communist time, they, um, there were some uh, bishops and cardinals coming to Prague to uh, visit our cardinal. And there was the possibility to speak a little bit more openly. And then I met in 88 uh, the Cardinal Listiger, the Archbishop of Paris. And I told him some of my ideas about the future of the church. And he said, it's very interesting. You must tell this to the Holy Father. But I, I told him, you know, it is very easy for you, Eminency, you are Archbishop of Paris. I've got my civil profession was psychotherapist with alcoholics. I have no passport and so on. But he, he said, oh, we will pray for this. Mm -hmm. And then in the next year, I was allowed to go to Rome. And then I, uh, 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 some uh, two days before the canonization, I just walked through Rome. And in Rome, I met the Cardinal Listiger. He was just in Rome. He said, oh yes, oh you are here. So I sent the Holy Father a letter uh, asking for, for the private meeting and I will support it. So I sent a letter. Oh, it's incredible. I receive, I receive uh, the answer, come for the, for the private dinner. And I've got the possibility during this private dinner for two hours to speak with the Holy Father and tell him 
everything about this secret, about the underground church. It was the day before the fall of Berlin Wall. And the Pope came from TV, from TV news, and said, this is the end of communism. And I said, oh, Holy Father, excuse me, I don't believe that the paper infallibility does work also in the political affairs. <laughs> I think there will be some five years, ten years, and say, no, no, you must be prepared, it will be very soon. And it happened in ten days. I returned and there was a great demonstration, and then after the demonstration, the communist regime collapsed and we were free. And then I was invited by John Paul II to organize in Rome, to prepare in Rome, his first visit to Czechoslovakia. It was his first visit in the post-communist world, just in uh, 1990, in April 1990. So I spent one month in Rome preparing this visit. I was practically every day speaking with the Holy Father. He wanted to be informed everything and and so so and then was this uh, great uh, visit uh, of uh, the Holy Father and it was some celebration of freedom not only for Catholic but for the whole nation. Hangugulbirotanyaronaraiso, uh, this is the time of crisis of globalization. The globalization process was very important for our civilization. So uh, the world was interconnected. But uh, there is a nice uh, sentence by the German philosopher Martin Heidegger. The technology overbridged all distances but didn't create any nearness. I think nearness is something more than just the absence of distance. And we Christians uh, should develop the culture of nearness. So, you know, uh, many young people, they are interconnected through internet, through mobile, fa mobile phone. There are so many so-called friends there, but they are not. And we need the real nearness. So, uh, now is the time of the crisis of the globalization. Now we see the shadow side of the globalization. Globalization. This is globalization also of terror, of violence, of uh, diseases, and so on. So, uh, as in the time of this crisis of globalization, they are uh, the new dangerous ideologies, the nationalism, uh, religious fundamentalism, fanaticism, uh, political extremism. And I think the church should heal this. The Pope Francis said the church should be the field hospital. And I think it's a very good metaphor. 
and I try to develop it also in this my last book uh, that uh, the field hospital needs very solid hospital as a background and this hospital should also develop some the spiritual diagnosis, uh, some process of, uh, of the spiritual immunity, immunity against these uh, ideologies of hate and so on, a recovery after the healing the wounds. Uh, so many people are spiritually and psychologically wounded in our world and uh, we need healing power. Uh, the churches, uh, religious communities should develop this healing power of religion. 코로나 팬데믹으로 많은 신자들이 미사에 참석할 수 없었고요. 교회는 텅빈채 거의 3년 동안의 시간이 흘렀습니다. 사람들이 돌아왔지만 모두가 온 것도 아니고 사람들이 종교에 갖는 생각도 이전과는 많이 달라진 것 같습니다. 한국의 최근 사회 조사에 따르면 처음으로 무종교인이 종교인의 숫자를 근소한 차이로 앞질렀습니다. 서구의 무신론자들과는 달리 한국은 실천적 무신론, 즉 종교에 아예 관심이 없는 사람들이 많아지고 있는 것 같습니다. 오히려 무신론자는 그리스도교 신앙을 위한 훌륭한 파트너로서 간주되지만 이러한 실천적 무신론자는 관심 영역 자체가 다르기에 더 어렵습니다. 이러한 상황에서 교회는 그리스도교의 우울을 준비하기 위해 어떤 역할을 할수 있을까요? So first uh, to the first part of your question about the pandemic. It was uh, the very important experience and I think also these hard experiences are uh, the lessons given by God. Um, if, uh, some, if uh, for some Christians uh, to attend the Sunday Mass was just a custom, just a tradition, so when it was not possible, they found another uh, ritual that their faith was very superficial. But uh, for uh, many other Christians, it was the opportunity to, uh, uh, to find a new way. And uh, uh, I know about some Christian families. They attended regular the Mass, but they uh, didn't, uh, didn't uh, speak about uh, the faith in the family. It was just a custom. Uh, yeah. And it was a part of the synodality, you know. The church is a common way. It was uh, also some sign of God, uh, some prophetical sign. So if the church will not go deeper, so there will be the future. Empty churches, closed churches. In many countries there are so empty churches, empty seminaries, empty uh, monasteries. And it could be a, a warning, prophetic vision. The church must go deeper. The church must offer something more than just catechism. The church must uh, let the people to develop their own personal, deep, mature, Faith, not just faith as a ritual, not just faith as a repeating the old dogmas, but to think about, uh, about our faith and to put our faith into our heart. So, uh, not only the orthodoxy, but also the orthopraxis and the living church, and also some spirituality, some culture of the inner life. So I think it was this pandemic was also some challenge from God. We must go deeper about atheism. You know, uh, I think there are many people, they call themselves non-believers. Those people, this group is so colorful and so uh, there are so differences. Life between the believers, uh, also the believers, there are some fanatics and there are some people, they have very mature face. And also during so non-believers, they are against 
theism they are against some theory about God and uh, sometimes uh, they are fighting against their own image about God. They have a very primitive image about God, faith, and church, and they are against. Uh, sometimes when somebody uh, says me, I'm an atheist, so I say, okay, tell me uh, how the God looks like in which you don't believe. If you don't believe in God, you must have some, some, some concept of God. And when he taught me his vision of God, I said, thanks to God that you don't believe in such a God. In such a God, I don't believe either. And then he said, but you know, I'm not so stupid materialist. I know that something is above of us. Ne? And I say, this is the somethingness. The people believe in something. Uh, but uh, it is our task, the theologian, to explain this somethingness. What is this something? It is the mystery. And uh, there, are some, uh, there are not only problems in life, the problems we can solve, but there are some mysteries. And I think the faith is the courage to enter the cloud of the mystery uh, and, and uh, to, to, to live with the mystery, to live also with some paradoxes of life. I think this is the face. Face is not ideology. Face is not just uh, some, some, some dogma, some teaching. It is inner life. It is the way. It is the way to the depths. 요즘 젊은이들은 종교에 대해서 큰 관심이 없지만 영적인 면에는 관심이 있다는 의미로 I'm not religious but spiritual 이라는 표현을 쓰기도 합니다. 종교와 영성 사이에서 고민하는 젊은이들에게 어떤 조언을 해 주실 수 있을까요? So if they are really spiritual, it's very good because um, spirituality is the sense for the sense of life. I think the spirituality is uh, the, the sensitivity to something deeper in our life. And it is the first step. Uh, but we can say to those people that, uh, the, uh, that man, a human being, is not just soul, it's also a body. That also uh, the spirituality needs some body. It is not just a uh, private thing. We need also the other people to communicate, to share our, our, our experiences and to celebrate together. And this is the role of the religion and church, to share our faith, to share our spirituality, to share our experiences, to celebrate it together and to live together and to help each other to go deeper. And of the synodal church as a common way, we need the others and to go together. 최근 한국에서 인기를 끌었던 방송 중 하나로 나는 신이다라는 다큐멘터리 프로그램이 있었습니다. 늘어나고 있는 사이비 종교에 관한 고발 프로그램인데요. 마약 문제와 함께 심각한 사회 문제로 떠오르고 있습니다. 현대인들의 마음이 병 들어가고 있다고 볼수 있을 것 같습니다. 신부님께서는 이러한 현상에 대해서 어떤 조언을 해 주실 수 있을까요? Uh, so many times people are seeking in the cult something what they haven't discovered in the churches. So we always should ask, what should we do? Uh, what was our mistakes? And uh, sometimes the churches were too bureaucratic, too cold. And, uh, and sometimes the cults are uh, so offering uh, something, bombing of love. Né? And, uh, and also this uh, selfishness, this cult of, of, of the self, né? that uh, I am God. So I think one of the most important message of our faith is 
we are not God and we cannot play the role of God. Uh, it was uh, the temptation by the devil, good and bad, and uh, to dominate over good and bad. So this, this is uh, the background of all evil, of all sins, uh, the attempt to play God. And uh, I think uh, we should realize that we are not God. Uh, the Saint Augustine was asked a way to God, and he said, first it is humility, second it is humility, and the third is humility. So I think we need this humility, and it's very important for our happiness and for our uh, uh, real, real, uh, uh, real place in, in, in the world. 한국 가톨릭 교회는 스스로 신앙을 받아들이고 또 박해를 이겨내면서 보편교회의 일원이 될수 있었습니다. 그러한 시간은 지나서 가톨릭 정신이 오늘날 한국 사회의 정신적 근원에 한 축을 형성했다라고 생각하고 있습니다. 끝으로 한국의 가톨릭 신자들의 신앙 생활을 위해서 한 말씀 부탁드리겠습니다. So. I, uh, I came not to teach, but uh, more to learn. I would like to learn from you. I, I, I came to listen to uh, the experience of the Korean church, and I'm practically on the beginning of my way. So it would be very arrogant for me to give some advices. But if we uh, should share our experiences, I think that uh, uh, this uh, great tradition of the Korean church, the role of the lay people in the church, it should be developed. So we need the active lay people in the church. Uh, we need the educated people. In our church, in our academic parish in Prague, I baptized during these 33 years after the fall of communism, when I'm pastor of this church, I baptized myself more than 3,000 adults. And wow. we have two years catechumenate. So I work with them a long way, uh, but uh, not Christians. And we work, for example, with films. The people are one week or three days in the absolute silence. And twice a day they see a very good film. So not a religious film, the film, the drama, which is very strong film. And then the people meditate about the message of this film, how it's uh, connected with their emotions, with their own life story. And I think this is the way to invite, to be creative, to be creative in pastoral work, to open the door of the church, to open our heart to the seekers, to embrace them, to accept them as they are. And so this is my wish to the Korean church, to be the open church with a mature, deep face. 오늘 신앙인의 길에 대해서 깊이 있는 말씀 나눠주셔서 대단히 감사합니다. Thank you for having me and uh, uh, I send the greetings and benediction to all your, uh, your visitors. 오늘 토마스 할리크 몬시뇨과 함께 신앙 여정을 비롯한 여러 가지 이야기를 나누어 보았습니다. 짧은 시간이었지만 저는 길고 충만한 피정을 하고 난 느낌이 듭니다. 다원적 가치와 개인의 자유가 증대되는 포스트 모더니즘의 시대에 신앙은 불확실하고 상대적인 것으로 간주되고 있습니다. 이러한 시대의 흐름과 도전에 대해 할리크 몬시뇨는 거부와 불안 대신 포용과 대화를 제시합니다. 불신앙의 시대에 토마스 할리크 몬시뇨는 하느님을 향한 사유를 다시 한번 할 것을 촉구하고 있습니다. 이 사유를 통해 우리의 신앙과 교회는 내일을 희망하며 그리스도교의 오후를 
다시 한번 기다릴 수 있지 않을까요? 시청해 주셔서 감사합니다.